<laughs> okay, let's do this segment again for a second. I'm done with mine. Do yours. <laughs> Welcome to our casa, and today we're making polpette al sugo, or meatballs. Before we get started, don't forget to like this video, comment below, subscribe to our channel, and ring the bell for notifications on new videos. We've had numerous requests to make meatballs by one of our best friends and regulars, Rick. So this is for you, Rick. And we didn't want to just do it on any episode. We wanted to do it on our 30th episode. Oh. Also because somebody's turning 30. 30 on 30. Mm -mm. Happy 30th! Woo! Ooh. Ooh. Uh, do you need a pass? <laughs> Cheers! Woo! Yes! All right, celebration's over. It's time to work. Let's prep the meatballs. Yes. For our meatballs, we're using one pound of ground beef and one pound of ground pork. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna season our meat. I'm gonna add some good pinches of salt and some fresh cracked black pepper. Before I add the other ingredients, I just wanna kinda break up this meat so it mixes and incorporates everything else a little bit more easier. Now let's add the other ingredients. We have one cup of breadcrumbs, a half cup of grated Parmigiano Reggiano, a half cup of super finely diced onion, two cloves of garlic finely chopped up, some fresh parsley chopped, one egg, and a dash of Worcestershire sauce. A few dashes. Now it's time to get a little messy. Just go in with your hands and squeeze all those ingredients together. Let's start forming our meatballs. We're gonna take about two tablespoons of your meat mixture and just roll it in your hands. Meatballs can be found all over the world with a vast variety of different flavors stemming from unique culinary traditions. In Italy, they call this dish polpetta. Deriving from the word polpa, not to be confused with polpo, <laughs> it means the lean piece of the meat or pulp from fruit. Polpetta kind of has an all over the place past with a multitude of variations and techniques, but in the end, it all has the same result. Ingredients mixed, rolled, and formed into a bowl. You can fry them, cook them in the sauce, and they're not limited to just meat. Polpetta can be fish or even vegetables rolled up into a ball. Anything can be made polpette. Turns out we have 30 meatballs on our 30th video. How perfect. Now we're gonna put these in the freezer while we prep the sauce. This sauce is a little bit more labor intensive, but has amazing results. We use it in our restaurant. It comes from our chef who used to work at Scarpetta, trained there, worked there for years, and it's a kick-ass tomato sauce recipe. Thanks, Scott Conan. But of course, if you don't have time, there's nothing wrong with opening a can of crushed tomatoes and using that. With some basil, garlic, it's all gonna be delicious. But today we're gonna be using 12 fresh plum tomatoes, so we gotta get started with these guys. First things first is we cut a cross on the bottom part of the plum tomato. Bum, 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 bum. 
Then we're going to boil them for about 10 seconds and put them into an ice bath. All right, now we peel. And they should peel off relatively easy, even a little kind of satisfyingly. We're gonna take our peeled tomatoes and quarter them. Then we're gonna take out the seed and that core, that's really hard part. Get all those seeds out. And I love to keep all of the tomato for later, for another project, because all of these insides and seeds and juices can be blended down and made for a beautiful pasta or on top of a pizza. There's so many different things you can make with it. Okay, now we take our quarters and just chop those in half. And now they're ready to be cooked. We're gonna add a little olive oil. Then we're gonna add in our tomatoes. Now we let them cook down until they get a little bit softer. After five minutes, your tomatoes should be a little bit softer. And this is when we mash them. Once it's mashed down, we're gonna lower the heat and let it cook for about 20 minutes at that nice simmer. You wanna come over frequently and give it a nice stir or some more mashing. While our tomatoes cook, we're going to add half a cup of olive oil to a smaller saucepan along with 10 cloves of garlic three sprigs of basil with the stems, and a half teaspoon of red pepper flakes. We're gonna turn on the flame to a medium low, and let's stir all those ingredients around till they get nicely coated. We're gonna let it cook until the garlic becomes a nice golden brown and the basil is fully wilted. We're gonna take the flame off and set it aside. After five minutes of sitting and steeping, now we're going to strain it out. And all of those little fried basil and garlic, oh yeah, I keep those. I put them on pizza whatever pieces of bread we do not waste anything back to our tomatoes we're only going to pour half of this infused oil and you're going to save that once again for something else wow two meals in one this video so you're just going to pour we had a half a cup of oil so about a quarter cup of that oil in now we're going to take it off of the flame Mix that all around, season with some salt, and our sauce is complete. Hey, do you wanna taste some? I'll trade you if you uh, get me some wine. Segue. Hi. Hi. Hey, where's the wine? Wine coming. The wine we're drinking today comes from one of our favorite locations in Italy, the Lake of Garda. Lago di Garda! Located around one hour drive from where I was born and grew up, the Garda Lake is a huge attraction from tourists coming all over the world. It's just beautiful, gorgeous over there. We were there last time, a couple of years ago, when our little, cute, beautiful love of our life, our nephew, Baby Frankie was just a couple of months old and we had the best family day over there with my sister, Matteo. It was just the best. The best. The best. We miss you. 
The wine we're drinking today is called Groppello and is typically cultivated on the southwestern side of the Garden Lake. Actually, the little village where this wine and this winemaker are located is called Polpenazze, which is a crazy coincidence since we are pairing this wine with Polpette and uh, we decided to use this wine way before we knew that uh, the location was called Polpenazze. So Polpenazze, Polpette, it's kind of it's kind of fun. It was destiny, kind of destiny. 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 We kind of call it destiny. Producer's name is Le Sincette, and they adhere to a very strict biodynamic protocol. This is one of those other winemakers that are completely committed into biodynamic agriculture, and we really love them for this reason. We can find all the information about the winemaker in the description box, together with information about this beautiful beautiful bottle and label that was made by a great super cool artist. I don't think I ever tried a Groppello recently, so let's open it! Ta -da! Wow, it's super dark. It okay. kind of reminds me of like an Armorone. Same region, Veneto. Wow. Good. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Happy 30th video. Happy 30th. This is nice. Love Grappello. Perfect wow. pairing for our polpette, actually. Thank you very much, Les Incette. And thank you, Giuseppe Locascio. He represents this wine here in the States. You can find all the information in the description box. Because you need to get this wine. Yeah, it's delicious. Delicious. All right, we got our meatballs out of the freezer. They were in there for about an hour and they're ready to be browned. All right, we got our Dutch oven or any pot that's pretty nice size that has a lid. And we're gonna coat the bottom with a little bit of olive oil. Let's add these little guys in. We turned off the flame, uh, we let the pan cool down a little bit, uh, now we're going to add those little baby meatballs back in, and we're going to take our sauce and add that all around. Alright, once everything's in, we're going to put our flame back on, about medium heat I'd say, stir that all around, make sure everything's covered. So we're gonna have that flame about medium low and we're gonna cover and let that all cook together for about an hour. After 45 minutes, we're gonna take the lid off and you will see that your sauce is maybe a little liquidy, but that's okay. We're gonna cook for the remaining time with the lid off so the sauce has a chance to reduce. I'll give you three. Three? That's it. That's all you get. Not even gonna wait for your wife. Fantastic. They look good. Fantastic. Mmm. Mmm. Little scarpetta? Little scarpetta. This sauce. Mmm. Mmm. It's so flavorful. Please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and ring the bell to get notifications. Please. And please make these meatballs because you're gonna love them mm. and enjoy them so much. Bye!